Contacts. Greetings and welcome. This is L2P Grenadier, Learn to Play Grenadier for Squad, and I am Proactive Death. So this is the second Learn to Play video in what I hope will be a series for my channel, focusing on the Grenadier class. Now the Grenadier is currently one of the most versatile kits available in Squad, and this video will focus on what differentiates this kit and how to use it effectively on the virtual battlefield. So each faction is given a primary fighting rifle, paired with an underslung grenade launcher. This launcher has six HE high explosive rounds and six smoke rounds. Now these rounds replace the hand-thrown frag grenade and smoke grenades that all kits share. But what good is it to have these area denial weapons if we can't properly deploy them? So that brings us to our first topic, ranging. Ranging and range estimation are important skills in the squad, not only for the Grenadier class, but for all classes. Having the ability for an accurate call out of, let's say, infantry, 50 meters, or BTR, 150 meters, is important for general gameplay, but again, very important for the Grenadier. A lot of this is because you have to be able to accurately gauge distance to put rounds on target, and then also make corrections if your first estimates were off. So how do we accomplish this? Well, unfortunately for ranging, there are no shortcuts. It just takes time in-game to be able to accurately figure out distance. But for putting rounds on target, we can use the US Leaf Sight for 25 meter, 50 meter, 100 meter, 150 meter, 200 meter, and 250 meter engagements. To do this, we will use a holdover at a known distance. In this case, 100 meters. So because I'm shooting at a 100 meter target, I'll do a holdover of two notches, which lines up to that green bush. So I shorted that one. But to make adjustments, I line up again, base of the target, find where two notches is for 100 meters, go a little bit higher, and send the round. And I get good effect on target. On to the action. So here's some in-game footage of engaging targets at 260 meters. I place the red dot where I want the round to land. And then I hold over to the cloud, which was at the top of the 250 meter mark. And as you can see, the round lands where expected. With practice, this can be done quickly and with deadly accuracy. The militia and Russian factions operate similarly, but with some differences. In this case, their aiming reticle hangs off the left side of the rifle. Now the one downfall to this is when aiming down sights with the Grenadier kit, it does block a large portion of your screen. Other than that though, the reticle breaks down as follows. I've had success with 25, 50, 100, and 150 meters using the various right angles as you work top to bottom on the sight. That being said, I still feel that the US version is easier and more approachable for beginners. So when to use a grenade launcher? In reality, any time that a rifle shot's too hard, a grenade is never a bad option. In this case, an infantry running in the field. That would have been a tough shot to make with small arms, but I relied on Splash to get them. Which leads me right to the next topic. Splash is your best friend as a grenadier. The only time it doesn't help you is inside 7 to 10 meters, as the rounds won't detonate. But if your target is 25 meters away, you can see that when you send a round, you take out three targets at 15 meters. So what do all these numbers mean? Realistically speaking, you have an 8 to 10 meter kill radius. And just like horseshoes and hand grenades, sometimes close enough is good enough. Moving on, the next two clips showcase various forms of indirect fire. In this instance, I've come to the top of a staircase and there are two infantry on the other side of that railing by the villa. So I engage the first with a grenade and I can pop back down, reload, and pop back up to engage the next two. Now with small arms, this wouldn't be possible. I'd have to have myself exposed a lot longer to engage multiple targets. And this is one of the real benefits of the Grenadier kit. As you can see here, I come back up and get the last guy who would run around the corner. This second clip is a more clear-cut example of indirect fire. There's radio chatter that there's infantry sneaking up on the right-hand side of the gate. And there's no way that we can engage them with direct fire through small arms. But instead, I can lob a nade right on the corner and clean them up. Good, hey. 
good hit. Thank you. As we move on to the next clip, here I'm trying to combine both tactics and topics that we've already discussed. We're taking marksman fire from the north, and while I think I see him, I fire a shot for ranging. It's pretty close, which means I only have to make a small adjustment. Luckily, I fall behind a berm, therefore using some indirect fire to hit the tree where the marksman is located. I believe he's down, but I displace and send another round just to be sure. The last topic that I want to cover is smoke deployment, right, as it's one of the most underused and undervalued aspects of the Grenadier kit. Contact, here. same spot, south-southwest. So in this example, Roger. there's infantry to the south, but only I can see them. So I choose to mark the targets with blue smoke. And I do this using the same aiming techniques I use for HE grenades. Right, targets marked, blue smoke. And while I do draw some fire, it's clear to see how easy you can spot the blue smoke from distances of up to 200 to 300 meters away. And I follow it with an HE grenade for good measure. In this final clip, I'm using smoke to mark targets for vehicles to engage. Blue smoke, pass the blue smoke. But that's it. I hope you enjoyed the content and found the gameplay examples of ranging, usage, splash, and indirect fire useful and can apply it to your own gaming as we all continue to learn to play Grenadier for Squad. Thanks for watching. Proactive Death Out.